It's kind of hard to believe that the original Oppo Reno smartphone only launched as recently as 2019, and yet already we're up to number bloody 10 in the series. The Oppo Reno 10 5G just launched here in Blighty, boasting some nifty camera tech, including a 32 meg telephoto portrait shooter. You got 67 watt super fast battery charge action, a gorgeous AMOLED display backed by stereo speakers, and all the usual lovely color OS shenanigans. So this is my full Oppo Reno 10 5G unboxing and early review after using it as my full time phone for a few days. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, what is in that box? Well, you've got yourself one Oppo Reno 10 5G. You've got yourself a big old brick of a power adapter, 67 watt Super VOOC action. Of course, you should get yourself a three pin plug if you buy it here in Blighty. Got yourself a Type-C USB cable and some quick start guide shenanigans. That's it, sadly no protective condom case bundled in the box. It wasn't that fun, kiddies. Now I'm going to chuck my SIM into the Reno 10 5G, get it all set up. All right, so I've been using the Oppo Reno 10 5G as my full-time smartphone for a few days now. And as you can see, I still haven't smashed it to bits, either accidentally or on purpose. So that's a good start. And for a mid-range mobile, it certainly looks pretty slick. You could fool someone into thinking it is a flagship smartphone. Looks rather smart. You've got some eye-catching curve action around the back and also the front. As you can see there, that display just tapering off at the very edges there. And that curved finish means that the Oppo Reno 10 certainly feels really nice and comfortable to clutch. And it's pleasingly skinny and lightweight as well, just weighs 185 grams. You've got a choice of just two colours. You can grab the Reno 10 in ice blue or this here silvery grey model. And I do kind of love how Oppo hasn't tried to do anything fancy with the name in there. No meteors or desert landscapes or anything like that. It's just silvery grey. Can't fault it. And the Reno 10 5G does sport a plastic frame, sadly, but it's nice and shiny, kind of looks metallic, and it's pleasingly skinny as well. There's pretty much nothing to it. And not too much extra girth added by that camera bump either, which yeah, doesn't jut too far out of the arse end. Although you do still get a wee bit of wobble action when you're using this thing, when it's lying flat on a desk or a table or whatever. And yeah, that back end is constructed from glass with this lovely frosted matte finish. So no matter how much you finger and fondle this thing, it doesn't get all grubby and greasy. I've certainly never had to wipe it down or anything. And the front end there isn't protected by Gorilla Glass, it's Asahi Glass instead. We've got a pre-installed screen protector shoved on there as well, so no worries about scratches and such forth. And sadly, however, no IP rating for the Oppo Reno 10 5G, so don't go getting it too moist. So from hardware, let's shift on to software, and this will come as no surprise to anyone who's used an Oppo smartphone recently. The Reno 10 5G runs Android 13 with Color OS slapped on top. And me and Color OS 13, we're not best buds, but we get on absolutely fine because it doesn't mess too much with the stock Android vibes. You've got your apps tray, you've got your notifications drawer you can drag down. You've also got a few extra features like the shelf, which is basically just a big page full of widgets. And the gesture support is solid. You've got the usuals like the one-handed board, but you've also got some extra bonus bits like being able to drag down all of the icons on your desktop. Very handy if you've got lots of the wee buggers stuffed away on there. And the customization on Color OS is pretty strong as well. So for instance, lots of always on display options, including the usual sad penguin and polar bear wars. You've got the edge light notification, which I rather like as well. Certainly looks pretty sleek. Bugger tons of bonus stuff, but anyway, I'm not going to spend ages in this video banging on about it again. I have done a separate video all about Color OS 13, so definitely go check that out if you're not really familiar with Oppo smartphones, you want to see the best new bits chucked in here. And sometimes it does take a wee while for the Reno 10 5G to wake up. You'll hit that power button, it'll take a good couple of seconds for it to actually sort of spring to life and use the good old face unlock. Otherwise, that optical in-display fingerprint sensor is generally reliable, as long as your fingers aren't too wet or too dry or whatever. And it's very pleasing indeed to see that Oppo has stuffed 256 gigs of storage into the Reno 10 5G, which is very generous indeed, considering the likes of the Galaxy S23, the iPhone 14 series, they all come with 128 gigs as base. You've got to pay for that extra 256. And in even better news, that's actually expandable via micro SD memory cards. So if you do a lot of downloading, you shoot lots of photos and videos, etc. well, no worries, you're basically sorted. Now, just like last year's Reno 9, the Reno 10 5G sports a 6.7 inch AMOLED display and it's a bit of a cracker. It's a full HD plus panel, as you would expect. You've got HDR10 plus support here for the likes of Netflix, 
So the contrast, nice and crispy, gorgeous natural looking visuals. And colours are nice and poppy as well if you are kicking back with some animated fare, something like that. You got a dinky wee selfie camera cutout thingy up near the top, doesn't really intrude too much in the action. And the brightness maxes out at around 500-ish nits, so I found that the Reno 10 5G was perfectly comfortable to use outdoors even when it was actually sunny. The Reno 10's display can bounce automatically from 60Hz to 120Hz for supported content. It's got that nice, super smooth, fluid finish, although admittedly ColorOS does tend to slow things down and jank it a little bit at times. But happily, I haven't suffered from any responsiveness issues, despite the fact you've got that curved screen. I found that even when I'm clutching this thing quite tight, I can still scroll and swipe and everything, and it's all registering just fine. And the Oppo Reno 10 5G also sports a stereo speaker setup, and it ain't too shabby at all. Here's a bit of a sample. Let's max out that volume and then listen to some bold wanger on YouTube. Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to another salami slapping episode of Textbird Weekly, the tech news show equivalent of tripping down the stairs and landing crotch first on a burning cactus. So as you can hopefully hear there, the clarity is not fantastic on the maxed out volumes, but it's certainly bloody loud, so you can clearly hear what's going on even if you're in a really noisy place. And the audio output is pretty balanced as well, it's not as heavily weighted towards that bottom speaker as some stereo speaker setups really are. Now while the Reno 9 was powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 778G chipset, ever dependable there, for the Reno 10, Oppo has decided to go MediaTek instead, so what you've got stuffed inside of here is the Dimensity 7050, backed by 8 gigs of RAM. And over the past few days, the Reno 10 5G has been reasonably well behaved. As I say, it occasionally takes a couple of seconds to wake up, and there was one occasion where I tried to use the camera. Basically, my daughter was at a critical point in her game, which of course was the perfect time for my cat to decide to jump up onto the laptop and completely f*** it all up. I thought it was cute, she thought it was bloody annoying. But of course it was one of those moments where it's like desperately trying to open the camera app, for some reason it was taking several taps to open that, and then as soon as I did open the camera app, just tapping that shutter button was doing absolutely nothing. It's like, what are you doing? I swear to God these things have some sort of sixth sense where for some sort of time critical moment they're just like, nope, can't be asked. But if you are a gamer, the Reno 10 5G can certainly be relied upon to smash through pretty much any title in the Play Store. You've got dedicated gaming tools that you can drag out at any time mid-game. This can block notifications, tweak the screen sensitivity, capture all of that hot violent action if you want to share it with the world, etc. And the likes of Genshin Impact, quite a demanding game, can run fine on the lower graphic settings. If you are going to boost the visuals to higher settings, you will need to make full use of the performance booster in that gaming toolbar. And even then, do not expect a super smooth experience. It is playable, but I just keep the graphics on a lower visual quality just to be sure. And the Reno 10 does get rather warm when you are gaming on the likes of Genshin as well, but thankfully this didn't seem to bulk up the performance, at least not in my experiences. Now Oppo has stuffed a mighty 5000 mAh capacity battery inside of this slender chassis somehow, and I've got to say the battery life on the Reno 10 absolutely sublime. You'll get yourself all day play on this thing from a single charge from dawn all the way to dusk. And I'm talking a lot of screen on time as well. I'm a fairly heavy user. I'm usually on my smartphone at least five to six hours a day. And I found that I could only run that battery down to around sort of 35, 40%, even on a very heavy day. Lots of camera use, lots of video streaming, podcast streaming in the background, etc. So yeah, you should happily be able to stretch to two days of action between charges if you don't go too crazy with this thing. And even when that battery is running low, well, no worries. You've got your 67 watt Super VOOC wired charging, so bung a cable in it. Just for a few minutes, you'll see that battery meter tick right up. However, there is no wireless charge in here. Still a reasonably rare feature at this sort of price, the likes of the Nothing phone you'd have to go to instead. So let's finish up this Oppo Reno 10 5G unboxing and early review with a squint at the camera tech. And as you can see there, triple lens set up on this back end. And in a somewhat surprising twist to the tail, none of those lenses are a crappy macro lens or depth sensor or anything. They're all actually fairly useful. Now the main shooter here is a 64 megapixel sensor. You do have the usual pixel bin and smart, although you can shoot at the full 64 megapixels if you want by hitting this high res icon up here. And I found that on full auto mode, the Oppo Reno 10 5G packs plenty of fine detail into every picture, as long as that lighting isn't balls, of course. Once you move indoors, you will start to notice your photos get a bit more grainy, those colours aren't as poppy, and any kind of movement often results in the inevitable blurry mess. HDR situations can be problematic as well, but with a little bit of care and attention, you're generally alright. Bright blue skies do often come out slightly saturated, so overall just stick to good light 
and you'll get some sharp, attractive snaps. Oh, and in the evening times, you will definitely want to make full use of that night mode. This obviously can't work miracles, but it can brighten up a shot taken in low light so you can at least make out what the subject actually is. Now the second lens slapped onto the Oppo Reno 10 is actually a 32 megapixel portrait shooter with a two times optical zoom. So as you can see there, get you in nice and close to your subject without you having to get all up in their face. And this delivers the usual bokeh style action blurring out the background. No worries if you find that the two times zoom is a bit too much, you're getting too close to your subject because you can shift back to that primary shooter instead. And I found that as with the main camera sensor, the portrait shooter works best in natural daylight. Indoor results can again be a bit flat with lots of grain seeping in. But the Oppo Reno 10 is good at a distance, allowing you to zoom up to 20 times and proven surprisingly good even when you crop right in. It's certainly one of the best options for zooming that I've seen at this sort of mid-range price. And then last up, that final lens is your basic 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter, which is absolutely fine if you just want to fit a bit more into frame. And naturally, you've got plenty of other bonus modes slapped onto this thing as well, including a good old dependable pro mode if you want to piss about with the ISO levels, the shutter speed, the white balance, all that kind of shenanigans. And if you like to shoot for movies, well, the Oppo Reno 10 5G can record up to 4K resolution footage. And again, you can swap to that portrait lens if you want to get closer to your subject without disturbing them. And the video footage in general live shot looks absolutely fine. Nothing remarkable. The stabilization is okay, even when using that zoom lens. And the audio pickup's fine as well. And then around front, you have a 32 megapixel selfie shooter. And it's basically the same situation as with that rear camera. Just don't try snapping any shots in wonky light and you'll generally be okay. Got those portrait smots on there to blur out the background, which again seems to work pretty reliably. I also had no trouble doing a bit of the video chat, Skype and Zoom and etc. using that front facing camera. The mics did a clear job of picking up on my voice and everything. And if you want to do some vlogging where you can shoot up to full HD resolution footage. And there you have it, my lovelies. That in a tasty wee nutshell is the fresh new Oppo Reno 10 5G. And not exactly a massive evolution over previous Renos. You've once again got very slick design, excellent battery life, good bit of a color os software shenanigans obviously the performance not quite as good as some other mid-range mobiles you don't have the likes of wireless charging but what you do get is that excellent two times optical zoom so if you do find you take a lot of pictures of the kids the pets you don't want to intrude on the action that is definitely a highlight unfortunately as for the actual camera abilities well it's not quite so hot when it comes to the indoor shots and the low light environments it's in these sorts of cases where the Pixel 7a definitely performs better. But anyway, that's my thoughts. Are you tempted by the Oppo Reno 10 5G? Be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell, etc, etc. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.